Welcome, warriors and denizens of the wasteland, to a new flight of fandom, the second episode of our flight, Mad Max, The Black Highway, which is itself an actual play of Apocalypse World 2nd Edition. As always, I am your Ayatollah of Rock and Rolla, your resident GM, Zach, otherwise known as Great Samino. I use he, him pronouns. And I am joined once again by a savage group of warriors this day, this lovely day. And if we could just go in our typical fashion, counterclockwise, starting with David, if you could give us your intro. Hey there, everybody. David here. Uh, he, him. I'm a graphic designer, an illustrator, and a game designer. You can check out my tabletop RPGs over at dbb-8.itch.io. And you can check me out on Instagram and Twitter at dbrunellbrutman. And awesome. I am playing Maguire. Righteous. Hopper, if he would like to take us next. Oh. You monster. Uh, what's up, everybody? I'm a Hopper, your resident dumpster fire. Uh, I use they, them pronouns, and I am uh, found in, on, and around the interwebs under Fail Deadly. That is with a three instead of an E because I'm a bad person. Um, and also, you can find me occasionally doing slightly less feral stuff uh under the legend don't i see the looks on your faces and you know what you're right that was a lie it's still fair pretty feral <laughs> um but it's good um <laughs> um under the legend tree uh and tonight i will be playing uh daxo um the child thing Excellent. that's the playbook i love it child thing <laughs> There's a whole lot of flavor in this game. Uh, Marcy, if you'd uh, introduce yourself next. What's up, y'all? Uh, I'm still Marcy, aka Experimental Madness, which is the name you can find me most places around the internet, except for Twitter, where I shall remain the resident cryptid. But in theory, you can find me there under the username Marciful. Uh, and I'm very excited to be back playing Kerosene, uh, resident faceless. Awesome. And finally, last but not least, rounding out this merry band of savages, Fox. Yes. Hello. Hello. I am Rocket Fox. You can find me anywhere that Rocket Foxes can be found, but probably more likely on Instagram, Twitch, these sorts of places. You can specifically find me on Thursday nights over on Sirenscape, where we are in the midst of, I think, season four, I want to say. We're approaching our final episode of the season for our Cyberpunk Red run, where I am Hades, the uh, net runner of your nightmares. And uh, as per tonight, however, I am playing Sin, who is the battle babe of maybe your nightmares. We'll have to see. <laughs> Excellent. And now, picking up right where we left off, uh, uh, gentle folks, uh, a lot has transpired in the wasteland. Let me go ahead and put on a little bit of mood uh, for our amusement here. Hmm. Yeah, why not? So, things have uh, gotten from bad to worse over in uh, the wasteland last we checked. We've got a few things that have transpired. We have our merry band of savages, McGuire, our late, uh, our, uh, our our resident Matro D, who himself uh, is the uh, meister of the dust bucket, a fine establishment where only the best rot gut is served. You guys uh, were cozying up to uh, your normal digs when a bunch of savages, in the form of a trio of. Uh, Warriors of the Wasteland, brutes more like, uh, made their way to the dust bucket, riding on top of a bunch of muscle cycles. Now, a couple of you guys took immediate interest, uh, kerosene in such uh, fine looking machinery, and in particular, McGuire, you happened to take a look and uh, see that there was some very interesting uh, familiar familiarity uh, distinguishing characteristics about these brutes. And then, of course, I believe, Sin, you wanted to go ahead and just, uh, you know, start working your way 
uh, on uh, for the uh, team for the, for team. the team. Yeah. Yes. And then Daxo being creepy as fuck as always. But there was a little bit of a wrinkle. Name of uh, Max. What showed up in the middle. Now, Max, all of you guys, I think, get the sense that whatever happens, wherever he goes, trouble ends up following. And a trail of dead is left behind him. But at the same time, that rule that proved that there was no exception to that rule when you guys had to ice the three brutes, one of whom it would seem belongs uh, as the son or the progeny, if you will, of one of your old friends, McGuire. So <sighs> we're in a bit of a situation. You guys managed to uh, pick up an exhausted Max who reluctantly told you, hey, there's a nasty group of uh, uh, warriors uh, that were interested in his uh, pursuit special. And now you guys got to figure out what the fuck to do because hell's coming. That said, a couple things have transpired. One, a few of you leveled up. If you guys would like to go ahead and explain what moves you've taken, I'm more than all ears. Is hell one of Sin's exes? I mean, I don't know that there's anyone who's not one of my exes, so... Maybe? Probably covers about five or six of them. Yeah, you know, I listen, I can't, I don't really have enough brain space to remember everybody. Names are difficult. <laughs> and, uh... To invest in a Rolodex. <laughs> so, about them moves. Anybody got anything to start? Any, who's picked up something new? Uh, I picked up the move Bone Feel from the Savvy Head playbook. And prior to the stream, we rolled a 12, which means I have both one forward and also I can just show up with no explanation or logic required in the right place at the right time, equipped for the job. Excellent. And uh, does anybody else have any starting moves that they'd like to roll for at the beginning of this session? All right. Sounds like we need to get rolling here, Road Warriors. So, all of you toughs are looking at a banged up man clad in old timey policeman leathers, what's left of him, and other scavenged bits staring at you dead eyed, McGuire, from a chair in which you have uh, placed him in the dust bucket. You all are alone, unless any of you guys had any plans or uh, eyes on doing anything else uh, during this uh, very sensitive time. I mean, uh, I think we, uh, you know, we've at least uh, as much as we're going to right at this moment figured out Max's deal. So I would like to know, uh, all right, so we, we have, um, we have two very definitively dead bikers. Uh, how dead is uh, Sprog, the one who uh, I sort of recognized his face as like a younger version uh, of this biker I knew back in my gang days? Mm. How, like how dead? dead is he? Mostly dead? Sounds Slightly alive? I'm sure you killed him, didn't you? Is is he entirely dead? Or he's non he just... he's non lethally dead, David. Or, or did I, he I think just you pass mushed him. out? It's <laughs> it sounds like uh, you're trying to read a sitch. Yeah. <laughs> give so, me uh, um, give me plus I... sharp. All right. Uh, seven plus sharp eight. All right. So. It sounds like the question that you are trying to answer here is, what's my enemy's true position? Yes. All right. In life. Very very much so. Now, I will tell you this. Uh, because you didn't miss, I'm not going to make a hard move here. But it is uh, an eight. And you can tell that uh, Sprog, you're not sure how much longer he's got for this world. <clears throat> Son of a bitch. Did did Maguire bring him into the bar? Is he still laying out? In he the would dust? still be. Yeah, I think I would have like gone out back to the the door of the bar, 
uh, and like, you know, looked out to where he would have fallen near the bikes, right? As he was trying to crawl away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's uh, he was passed out from blood loss. Oh, God damn it. God damn it. What kind of medical facilities do we have in uh, in uh, Black Rock? Medical facilities. This is this is <laughs> this is your town. It's an old mining town. What's left of it? Uh, you guys tell me. Uh, I mean, I, is it like the equivalent of like that old Western trope of like somebody got shot, take him to the vet, he's still open? <laughs> yeah, maybe. I mean, yeah, there's probably right. always I, the Undertaker. I feel like there's one guy who is maybe not really a medical doctor, but like for some reason knows just enough. That... Oh my God! Is it clock? Oh, <laughs> d d so are you? You're asking it's now Doc Clock. Doc Clock. Doc Clock. Doc clock. Doc clock. I mean, That's a broken clock a is clock. right twice a day. Yeah, uh, I think at this point, Doc Clock. Uh, uh, if you want, he can still be in the dust bucket, uh, just in a corner, uh, oblivious to the world. What do you guys want? I mean, I didn't see him move. <laughs> yeah, this is a crime. I I love this. Uh -huh. So, uh, um, yeah, M Maguire is gonna uh, turn back into uh, uh, into the dust bucket. Call back, boy, clock, mate. Yeah, uh, and I think just kind of stirring from a beverage, kind of like focusing on it, just kind of like glazed eyes looking over. You just uh, see clock start and turn to you. We got a lad out here in bad shape. Think he could use some attention of the medical soul. Hey, all right. And uh, he uh, shoots uh, whatever uh, uh, glass of swill he was working on, uh, reaches from behind the bar uh, and pulls the highest proof thing you got. Uh, Sin is going to approach Maguire. Mac, don't tell me you're going to help one of those blokes out there. Listen, I think I recognize that kid. Or, uh, recognize his pop. I recognize a lot of people. A lot of parts of a lot of people. That doesn't mean I go saving them. I think we might have more... Right. I lost the last part of it, though. <laughs> Why? You got a frog in your throat. David, your your audio short-circuited. I oh, no. said, <laughs> I think we might have more leverage with this lad alive rather than dead. Hmm. <laughs> leverage? All right. I like the sounds of that. I'm coming along, too. All right. Adults are, are adult, adults are not in the bar. Uh, Kerosene, uh, the second you two leave, because she was like perched up on one of the stools next to Max after creepily saying hi, she like cranes her mask like over and sees you both step outside. And she just like leapfrogs, dives ungainly over the bar, but it's like, st like her stomach is on the counter and she like scrambles for some of the liquor and like draws one of the bottles up. And she was like, <laughs> she opens the, um, God damn it. <laughs> she, she opens, like she uncorks it, like with her teeth and like is about to drink it herself from the bottle before like seeing Max and just hand, hands it, hands it to him. And then she's like, oh wait. And she dives back again over <laughs> the counter and pulls out like a glass Ta -da. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think Max just looks at this, looks at the glass, looks at the bottle, just with his teeth, takes out the cork and just takes a real mighty swig uh, before looking back at you and then just pours into the glass. Yep. Uh, and then uh, Kerosene dunks her gas mask, silly straw proboscis in and drinks. <laughs> The, you can see, like, if you were to look up, like, the whites of his eyes are just, like, just kind of, like, completely, like, big as dinner plates. I think he's just 
as always, just perpetually kind of muddled and also terrified of whatever new situation the wasteland finds him in. And I think at that point, yeah, uh, he's just kind of like absorbing this to the best of his ability, takes another swig. <laughs> Daxa, where are you in all this? Daxo is there's some people that are very very dead right oh yeah um I think you see Daxo talking to another kind of weird looking kid um and two more of them just kind of pop up from behind a building mm -hmm. and start to drag off the dead bodies okay uh I will say these kids are fucked up man. <laughs> uh all right <laughs> I will tell you this. Um, I think that this counts as uh, a barter move, actually. Does this count as a barter move? Damn yeah. It. I'm trying to find my list of uh, names. When, oh, uh, I got a few for you. Uh, oh, I, oh, wait, no, I found it. I found it. I found it. So the one, um, uh, the, yeah, you, you probably very briefly hear um, it. It's a little bit odd because it sounds like a very weird, fucked up pigeon language. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, all of these kids kind of look very similar, even though they are of different, um, slightly different ages and builds and ethnicities. Like these are very clearly, they're all, they have a vibe. Mm -hmm. um, and <laughs> I think in, in this pigeon language, the only name you hear is... Um, is uh ears as dax is talking to this person all right as in i want the ears or you get to have the ears as in somebody's name is ears all right okay all right in that case uh it sounds like you are so you're when you barter Roll is. When you give one uh, barter to someone, but with uh, strings attached, it counts as manipulating them and hitting the roll with a 10 plus, no leverage or roll required. So my question is, are you asking for something in return, or is this something you're giving freely? This is something I'm giving freely. Okay. I, I guess like the, the implication is that they would help me anyways, but these are my siblings, so you know. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, so uh, I think that while nobody is looking, just these bodies just abscond. Um, and I think that, you know, there's just kind of like, Maguire, when you go out to to see uh, the mess here, like there's just some blood left over. Well, the, yeah. the guy who's still alive is still there. Yeah, he's still there. Um, God, I kind of want to make you roll for that, but I think uh, I don't want to negate Maguire's uh, move here. So, yeah. Uh, Maguire. I just oh, imagine no. if, if I go out, yeah, like I, I imagine the kids it. coming over and Maguire like has a broom. He's like, shoo, shoo. <laughs> <laughs> no, like if we if we walk out and there and all the bodies are gone, that's oh. kind of like yeah, roll for it. Yeah, all right, okay. So roll I will to convince my siblings to not take the live person. Yeah, at this point, like you're or you're or vice versa. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're rolling. I mean, you're rolling to manipulate someone. Remember, you have plus one forward from your hold. Uh, what what is this? This would be a um, uh, oh hot. <laughs> yeah, roll plus hot. <laughs> roll minus hot. Um, <laughs> remember, you get plus one though. Do I have to use it on this? You don't have to, but I'll, I'll give it to you because of the barter I actually. I should actually still use that. That was uh wait, so I do have a plus one? Yeah, I'll give you a plus one. Oh, because because yeah, okay, fair. I see that. Uh so the total is seven. Okay. Actually, let me double check. I, I think I, I read this wrong. Um it counts as manipulating them and hitting the roll with a ten plus, no leverage or roll required. So the only string that is attached to this, you are giving them whatever they want, but they have to leave the body. You didn't have to roll, but you oh. know what? We'll, we'll Whatever, I'm still marking the XP because you made me roll. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, please do. Uh, yeah. What are you going to do about it? I was going to say, uh, Maguire, you come out there, the only person there uh, uh, is uh, the kid, is Sprog. I don't know if this is quite as suspicious as it would normally be, because I feel like this is what happens 
any time we've certainly had people dies. die here before <laughs> yeah yeah like if you if you turn your back on a dead body in this town it's just gone yeah yeah i will tell you this um what's let me ask you guys this what does the law look like in black rock who who makes the law you turn your back on a dead body and it disappears Where laws of nature <laughs> Where uh, anarchists, anarchos, yeah, come in. <laughs> Look, strange ladies sitting in irradiated pools of water, distributing machetes, is no basis for a system of government. <laughs> or is it? And now it's canon. Um, all right. Yeah, I, I mean, I think I was going to ask, like, um, where are the rest of the townsfolk? Because I'm I'm seeing this sort of acting like a, a you know, kind of a, a pretty informal collective, mm -hmm. right? Like there were some people who who made their home here. Uh, over time, you know, more people showed up. Some of those original people, uh, you know, might have even been here long enough that they have kids. Um, and it it you know it's relatively safe um and i i think it's just sort of like ad hoc over time governance mm -hmm. um where you know there's probably some people who are respected enough in the town that their their word kind of carries weight and if you want to make a decision you get everybody together a anybody who anybody who wants to shows up you talk it out and then, you know, uh, and then that's how decisions get made. Yeah. Which means I feel like there's not any sort of official law enforcement or anything like that. It's it's everybody is protecting the community to the best of their ability simultaneously. Kind of like somebody rings a bell and everybody shows up with a gun. Yeah. 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 It's more of like a hey Rube situation. Uh, yeah. So I, I think that you see that there is a. Uh, uh, kind of like a man that is uh, clad in uh, what looks like a cloak made of old aluminum uh, cans, uh, just kind of like shredded and turned into like scales almost. Um, and all of the uh, logos and kind of like uh, uh, writing has been kind of like uh, blasted away by the uh, sands of time and by the literal sands uh, of the wasteland. Uh, and he's uh, in the middle of pulling the boot off of Sprog. Uh, who is kind of like like his eyes are rolling back into his head while his uh, his face is sweating and his uh, his eyes are closed um, and you just hear uh, uh, Doc Clock just kind of like oi oi move he's not done yet and um, yeah so this is the scene that you guys uh, are privy to you then get off that boot. And uh, Bollard, uh, I think, uh, just kind of like drops the boot and then kind of like goes back and goes, It's my boot. I found that boot. It's attached. No, hey, you listen. It's still on his foot. You know this. We've been over this before. It's still on his foot. He's not dead yet. You either cut off the foot and take the foot with it or you go away. I'll be back with a machete. Yeah, will you go get the machete now? You don't have it on you, do you? Get out of here. <sighs> And he, he just kind of like scrabbles off this uh, uh, couldn't uh, like <laughs> is like 65 going on 90. I love this pack of semi feral people trying to be a society. <laughs> uh, yeah. At which point my heart. <laughs> uh, I think dot clock uh, uh, uncorks the bottle really quick. Uh, takes a big swig and then uh, lifts the uh, what is left of uh sprog's uh shirt uh and armor and just begins applying this high proof uh whiskey or rot gut whatever it is to the wound uh before moonshine yeah moonshine just rips uh, a, a bit of cloth out of uh one of his pockets like basically a bar rag and just starts uh kind of like mounting pressure onto the wound or oh, clock is that gonna help it can hurt uh, yeah, I was going to say, so, uh, while you are administering medical care, uh, I think that, what is it that you guys are intending here? Do you want to move him? Do you want to try to stir him now? What's your intention? 
I mean, I think I'll ask Clark. Um, he, uh, he in good enough shape to move? Uh, let's see. Uh, this is actually uh, harm and healing. So uh, if I'm going to let one of you guys uh, roll uh, to heal another uh, bit of harm. So in this case, uh, I'm going to say, let me see. You guys, I think, did about three harm to this guy. So let me see what I can do here. I think uh, in this case, like you're actually rolling to help clock. Uh, to see if you can bring this guy uh, from the brink of death. Uh, so one of you guys uh, can either roll history uh, or to... Yeah, I think that in this case, let's say that you guys have a history of uh, one with clock. Uh, anybody who would like can roll to help here if you're feeling lucky. How you feeling there, buddy? I'll do it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> unless, unless you would like to. Hey, I don't know. That, if I want that to... just sounded very tentative. So <laughs> I, I don't know if I want this man's life resting on my shoulders. <laughs> I'm comfortable with that. <laughs> All right. Uh, hmm. A nine. Okay. Uh, so on a nine, I would say um, they take plus one uh, to this roll. God, I can't believe I'm not supposed to roll dice. So um, damn. You know what? I will say that that is enough. Like, that is enough to heal one harm, is what I'll call. And at this point, uh, you just kind of see um, Clock kind of, like, uh, applying pressure to the wound. Uh, and then I think just very kind of, like, unceremoniously just smacks uh, the kid and, go, and says, Hey, wake up! And I think Sprog just his eyes pop open. Uh, just gritting his teeth in pain uh, as the moment he breathes, he can feel this wound in his side. And he's Daddy just... Son. <sighs> Clock, that's amazing! <laughs> and, and um, yeah, Clock just kind of shrugs his shoulders. Don't know how long that's going to work. Um, yeah. Well, I can always slap him again. It's okay. <laughs> right, you are. Um, yeah, what do you, uh, what do you do, McGuire? Um, I'm going to grab him and I'm going to drag him into the back room of the bar. <laughs> okay. All right. You going to make this a party? Okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, yeah, you just, uh, you do that. And now you guys find yourself, uh, leaving a trail of blood into the bar, even with the, the pressure being applied here. Doc is kind of like trying to keep up, but also kind of like, uh, probably knows that you shouldn't be moving somebody with a deep uh, 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 wound in danger of sepsis here. Uh, so, um, yeah, I think he's just kind of like going along with it at this point. Um, yeah, so you guys are back in the dust bucket. Yeah, so, you, you know, Maguire has just like, you know, reached down and just like grabbed this, this guy, just drags all the way through, through the bar, past Max kind of leaning <laughs> leaning up against uh his his seat um and into uh into the back um I think uh uh you know maybe maybe I like nod to uh nod to somebody uh, somebody grab a chair and I think uh yeah Get some rope all right I think also, um, does Kyrosene still have that glass in front of her? I mean, if you if you were dragging uh, him past, like Kyrosene is perched on her stool, like two feet on it, with like the the like, knees up to chest, and then like hands splayed out in front of her, like some weird four legged spider creature, especially with that gas mask proboscis on, and she's still like drinking from liquor she knows she's not supposed to be able to, and she's just like quietly slurping as she watches you come in as if she's trying to not be seen. She's like sitting next to Max and all of a sudden she just like ducks further down. Yeah, I like, think put, puts her arms around the glass so like maybe no one will see that she's drinking alcohol. <laughs> yeah, Again. I think when uh, Sin's going to follow this processional in and then comes over to where uh, Kyrosene and Max are and she's going to reach over and take the glass 
Nope, <laughs> nope. <laughs> and then she's just gonna take and drink the rest of it. Ugh. You know the rules. I was, I, I was doing civil c- civilization. McGuire always says when someone comes in, we give them. Uh, uh, we we we're supposed to give when them a drink. When you're older, that's when you do civilization. At your age, you just you sit there and, and look dynamic. What? What's what's dynamic? <laughs> she she's like now just like saying that word again in her head. Like she's just like bouncing it around. It's a new word. She's very excited about it. <laughs> uh, uh, Daxo, are you following suit in all this? And Speak up, dear. You're mute. Daxo, you're very quiet. It's Daxo's. the frogs. He's just. What are the frogs? I still don't know. <laughs> Daxo's sitting in the corner of the bar, just um, staring at this this new person, the one that's not a wolf, but brings all the pain and all the suffering on the world on his shoulders. And uh, really quietly, is just um, popping plastic soda soda bottle caps into his mouth and and I think where before with kerosene the eyes had been wide uh, they turn to look at you Daxo and the eyes kind of narrow and try to study you Daxo studies back alright are you <laughs> are you trying to get something back here I think Daxo wants to figure out what this thing that isn't a wolf wants. If he's being hunted by the wolves too. If he... I think Daxo wants to know whether this is somebody who needs shelter or if he's a storm that needs to be weathered. All right. When you read a person in a charged interaction, roll plus sharp. That is an eight. Okay. On a seven to nine, hold one. Uh, Is the character telling the truth? What's your character really feeling? What does your character intend to do? How does your character wish I do? How can I get your characters to? So in this case, these are, this is, in this case, you are asking my character. Uh, So what do you want to know? With my eyes. (laughs) Um, Out of those options, I feel like... uh, what was the one after how does my character feel uh what does your character intend to do that that is what daxo wants to know i think there may be like um there's just like a very i think maybe uh the eye contact is long enough that it's even uncomfortable for max who is not used to somebody unblinkingly staring directly into him Mm -hmm. um and uh, there is just this weird kid eating bottle caps from the shadows of the far side of this bar. And as you Classic. as you look at uh, uh, at this figure, um, and you kind of like open your mind and kind of like try to read him, the thing that comes to you is this is less of a human being and more of a an animal at this point. Um, in that the thing that is active that you can tell is all of these kind of survival sensibilities, just kind of like you can see that like whatever senses that he had uh, as uh, an old time or history uh, police officer or peacemaker, or peaceman, um, you know, peacekeeper rather, um, they have been sharpened to a very fine edge as you are talking he is, you realize he is assessing how much of a threat you are to him. He is looking at the exits. He's taking in the entire situation. Uh, and you know for a fact that even though this man, for lack of a better word, uh, could do you immense harm uh, if he really willed it, uh, he has no such intention. The only thing that's engaged is that basal ganglia lizard part of the brain that says survive. That is his sole intention. 
is survive. Daxo tucks the last, um, a few, the last of the bottle caps back into a pocket, secretes it away, and um, just kind of um, slinks over and sits down immediately next to Max and rummages around in his pocket and pull and pulls out a uh, very crinkly bright orange thing and um, places it very gently in front of Max. Um, and like this gold foil is pretty faded. It's clearly like a little bit slightly melted, but I think you can make out um, a butterscotch candy. And uh, he looks at it looks back at you and you realize that he is making an assessment as to whether it's right for him to eat this and to deprive you of it. D uh, Daxo um, very quietly reaches, just kind of very gently reaches over and unwraps the candy, leaves the candy on the bar and stuffs the wrapper into his mouth. Kerosene tugs on Max's sleeve, and she's, she, she, it's okay. Daxo's friend. And he, Eat it or I will. He reaches forward, gingerly takes the Werther, uh, the, <laughs> the, 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 the Werther's, <laughs> the butterscotch in his uh, uh, hand, looks at it, looks at both of you, and pops it into his mouth. Uh, Sin, who has like kind of sat near where all this is happening and still has this drink, uh, is, um, oh, I've never seen anyone take so long to eat a candy. This is ridiculous. <laughs> hey, hey, and she's gonna start snapping in front of his face. You there. Yeah, what? Yeah, you. Hey, when, you have his full attention. So, where do you come from? What are you doing here? Have you never had a candy before? It's been a long time. Well, I mean, are you hungry? Do you need... I mean, candy's not going to sustain you. I mean, and she turns yeah, to Daxo. They yeah, are they are very... They, and to both Daxo and Kerosene, they are very delicious, very tasty. Um, and then turning back to Max. But, you know, the kids seem to like you, so... You know, could get you fixed up with something a little more with sustenance, if you know what I mean. Liquor. It's, uh, it's something like that. Gasoline. He uh, mm, he, diesel. Lo he looks at all of you and just says, water. Yeah, well, uh, water's good. It's a good start. We can get you that too. But um, look at you, you have skin and bones. You, the candy, the one candy is not going to... You came in here barely crawl here. Um, uh, kerosene. Go, go get this yeah. uh, creature some water. No, I won't touch it. No, it's evil. It'll get on me. D Daxo, please. You have all seen like in in any you know in any previous visit to the dust bucket. Um, there is, uh, I think, um, under the bar, um, where it's a little more protected from prying eyes because, weirdly, you don't display the top shelf stuff, uh, which is water in this kind of bar. Uh, like a, uh, one of those, like, um, plastic water barrels or it's it's probably like an oil drum honestly that's been filled with water uh, and that's that's underneath the the bar you know that so just kind of does a quick quick little twirl on this is one of this is a bar stool this is one of the ones that actually spins most of them are stools this one's bolted in place um and then uh kind of scuttles over and swings underneath very lively underneath the um the flip up and downy door Man, we had an entire stream where we covered exactly what those things are called. The flip this, up and downy door? The section of bar that flips up to allow egress. The, Isn't it a flip top or something? Yeah, <laughs> flip top bar. Is that there's what it is? a specific the, the, like, name this for thing, it. The, this thing. Yeah. Bar. I thought it was a flip top. 
But no, we, we searched I, no, it. That's not it. We searched it. There's a there's a very specific name. Anyways, swings underneath that and just kind of um scuttles over to I think um to uh the water. Um and uh Kerosene very... is making pained noises in, in like in the corner. <laughs> Kerosene and no one's going no! to no one <laughs> is going to force you into anything you're not comfortable with. My god. Goodness. And um, Sin's going to go over. I imagine Sin has an idea where Maguire would keep the the sustenance, the food, the snackies, um, and goes and starts just rifling through and kind of brings some stuff back over. Yeah. And I, I will say, um, if, uh, if you open that drum of water in front of uh, Max, he is just going to grab the glass uh, as soon as possible, just start dunking it. Um, Honestly, oh, and I, I assume it's behind the bar. I'm assuming yeah, I there's think like it's a hidden spigot. Probably behind oh, the never bar. Mind. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I think um, yeah, yeah. It Daxo is, it is grabs. definitely concealed, and there's a spigot. Daxo, Daxo grabs for uh, this a reason. world's best dad mug, <laughs> uh, and um, <laughs> fills fills this up with water and kind of gives it like a very judgmental sniff, and um, places it in front of uh, in front of McGuire before. Um, reaching into again into this vest and pulling out um pulling out a let's see let me uh, yeah, so mcguire um, is out currently a in the ripper. back room dealing with uh our boy mm -hmm. i i was gonna ask as uh as you guys are uh feeding uh uh max and and basically kind of watching him just very like gingerly trying to take and not spill any water or uh, or food that you uh, give him. Um, Maguire... Sin the entire time is just stare like staring really judgmentally, <laughs> <laughs> just uh, eyes locked. Like <laughs> so D Daxo pulls out a miniature Red Ripper, um, which is a Australian candy that I looked at for no reason um, and chucks it at kerosene as she keeps making these pain noises before scuttling back out underneath the door and then sitting back down next to um, next to Max. And uh, when, when eyes are off kerosene, you don't see that she doesn't eat the candy. She just puts it in her pocket. Oh, <laughs> I'm just imagining a big ball of butterscotch now. Um, but yeah, I was gonna say oh, Red Rippers is specifically a raspberry twisty thing. There's a pretty horrifying amalgamation of candy in that pocket. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Just um a sticky dirty ball. Yes. I think as you are staring note of that. <laughs> I think as you are staring uh uh at Max, um uh, 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 sin. I think he his eyes kind of raise and you know just kind of like puts aside the glass and and all the sustenance and uh, seems about to uh, kind of like I think kind of react. But before we do that, McGuire, you are in this uh, back room with Sprog. At this point, he has been stabilized by Doc, uh, kind of like that. Uh, tourniquet slash kind of uh, uh, kind of uh, pressure uh, rag there is uh, is applied and doing whatever it can. It's completely soaked through. Um, but you have probably precious little time of where Sprog is lucid. Uh, what do you do? Uh, okay, so uh, I would like to have propped him up in a chair and tied him to that chair. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we're we're in the back room, just sort of amongst the the stills and the the brewing vats. Uh, not a large space, not large stills and vats, but it, enough. Um, and then I think uh, as uh, you know, uh, as these folks are uh, are doing their thing out there, uh, McGuire's gonna uh, gonna come back out uh, and um, and actually like. Uh, Go up to sin. Um, all right, lad's secured in the back room. I don't know how long he's gonna stay conscious. We gotta get him to talk, and uh, well, you, you're gonna be talking, <laughs> right? Ah, uh, you know how I feel about lads who are barely conscious. I gave that up eons ago. 
Yeah, well, uh, why don't you do run more round as a favor? Mm. Mm. Uh, Only for you, Meg, because you're so cute. And she's going to get up and be like, <laughs> to uh, Max. Thanks, love. I've got my eyes on you. <laughs> she's going to go to the back room. As Sin does that, uh, uh, Kerosene, who's still sitting next to Max, like tugs on his sleeve and just mimics the the eyes on you motion, even though she's just pointing to like the completely blinding like white of the gas mask, of which there are no eyes to see behind it. <laughs> so good. <laughs> uh, and Sin, as uh, as McGuire like you know puts his hand on the on the door handle, uh, he's he's going to turn to you. All right. Uh, which one of us is the good cop, and which one of us is the bad cop? Well, I mean, I didn't bring any of my my dirty toys or anything. You know, I don't have any beaten sticks or anything like that. So I, I guess I could be the good cop. All right. Got a better face for it, that's for sure. <laughs> and uh, McGuire's gonna open the door, uh, march right up to Sprog, uh, kind of grab him by the front of his uh, his shirt or or vest or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. I think, but as soon as McGuire does that, before he can say anything, <laughs> Sin is gonna get like right down to his eye level and be like, so. You thought you could come in here and just start throwing your weight around, did you? <laughs> yeah, and M- McGuire's like about to reach for the shirt and then it's like, oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and... Uh, Sin totally missed the memo on what they were supposed to be doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think um, you basically, you're, you're taking, going down to his eye level, um, just like in the, the, like kind of like in the, the kind of like glazed over wax of kind of like, near death and or um just kind of uh grievous injury uh you see him kind of start awake from this kind of uh uh this glaze this kind of fugue state and just kind of like what what are you talking about and she's gonna pat him on the side of the head oh you don't look so good hey and she's gonna start like she's gonna put her hands on both sides of his head and start like wiggling it back and forth yeah and uh he just kind of is uh, kind of like trying to react um, and like right, we're put doing a good cop, weird cop. <laughs> good, 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 good. Uh, he is, he's trying to kind of like, you know, bat your hand away from the head, but you realize that he just doesn't have a lot of the strength in his neck left uh, mm-hmm. and is just kind of getting batted around by uh, your kind of uh, uh, kind of back hands here. And then she's going to tap him on the cheek and then kind of stand up and then spin around uh, toward McGuire and take a couple steps away. Yeah, yeah, he's M- going to be a McGuire. tough nut to crack. <laughs> <laughs> McGuire, McGuire kind of cocks his head, gives you a look like, what are we doing here? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then is going to sort of like peek out from uh, from around you to look at Sprog. Uh, yeah, and, and Sprog just kind of like looks at you and just... You know, his 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 words slurring, he just says, I know you. I know about you. Yeah. What do you know about me, lad? I know you used to run with my pops. Right, good. You're on the right track. I How's know- your pops doing? And uh he kind of like looks at you and he's you realize he is kind of like trying to make a decision in his head uh, and he seems a little stuck. Uh, McGuire is going to push it, um, whether it's good or whether it's a good idea or not, uh, and just sort of continue talking as he, you know, as he sees this expression. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's, he calling, what's he calling his gang these days? How many boys he got? And where he, they posted up, huh? He looks at you, just says, enough. He's got enough. Give me a number, kid. Not four, plenty. Or can't you count that eye? Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he's looking at you, and I need you to read a sitch for me. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So roll plus sharp. Am I, am I reading a sitch, or am I reading a person? I think, I think... Let's say reading a person, 
Um, okay. I will tell you this. If, uh, if you'd like to help here or interfere, Sim, <laughs> you may totally roll uh, history. Yes. Yeah. Roll history with McGuire. Okay. And... Yeah, that'll, that'll be fine. And... <laughs> no, it won't. You get nothing from me. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Um, there's a... You have a two. I rolled a two. Let oh. me let me clarify. Oh, no, okay. No. You you get minus one to this roll. Great. Oh yeah. Thank, yeah. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Essentially, right. Sin I... is, is, turns around and and once she hears that to McGuire, she she's like, oh, I didn't know you knew this kid. What's what going on here? Oh, actually, oh, I misread it. That's for interfering. On a miss, be prepared for the worst. All right. This will be fine. I'm sure this will work itself out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I would like to. Um, I would like to pull out one of my Maestro D moves here. Okay. Uh, at this juncture, so so instead of read a person, I want to pull out everybody eats, even that guy, uh, <laughs> which. Uh, when I want to know something about someone important, I roll plus hot, and then it has a somewhat different list of questions from read a person. Cool. You may cool. you may totally roll that. Please do. Because I think figuratively you guys have uh, eaten from the same trough, so to speak. <sighs> okay. Well, uh, I've just barely squeaked out a seven. Okay. So also, Sin, make sure to mark experience. All right. So of the, so, que of the questions yeah, available Yeah, so I can ask you. one question on yeah. a seven to nine here. Um, and I am going to go with who do they know, like, and or trust? Um, I will tell you this. Uh, you can tell... I think from the way um, you have been hitting up uh, and kind of interrogating him, Sprague has no love for his father. Um, and you realize that um, if anything, you know, that kind of confirms some of your worst fears about uh, Omega, now Alpha. Yeah. So in response to Sin's question... Uh, Maguire still like making eye contact with Sprague as he said that as he says this is gonna say I don't know this kid but uh, I know his people uh, they ain't the best sort are they kid and uh, he I think that just there's this kind of unspoken understanding and a slow kind of nod. So how's about this? You tell me a thing or two about them, and uh, maybe we learn a little something that can bump you up to the top of the dog pack. And uh... Or you tell me nothing you bleed to death on the floor of this distillery. And I think, uh... Or she could ask you some more questions. Yeah, I've got my shaking hands here, all good and ready. <laughs> and, um, uh, at which point, I think, uh, Doc Clock moves into the room, uh, and kind of, like, just says, uh, Magua, and just kind of, uh, pulls you to one side. And you realize as he kind of like points uh, at the kid and then kind of whispers into your ear, um, you realize the flop sweat that is covering this kid. And not only that, the pale like pallor that is falling over him from the blood loss. And uh, you just say, you just hear him say to you, this kid's got minutes. Get what you need now. That is tells me ain't got... yeah. Sorry? That is my hard move, so go ahead. Bollocks. 
Doc tells me you ain't got long, kid. And so mm -hmm. I'm gonna lay it out for you straight. You tell us a thing or two about your gang, about your dad, and uh, maybe there'll be some justice for you in this world. You tell us nothing, you vanish, your dad gets everything. All right. I will tell you this. I think that in this case, you are trying to seduce him with something he wants. A hundred percent. So... Uh, yes. Yes, please roll plus hot. All right. I'm not going to help because I don't I, think I it's going to help. I, I'll solicit hey. help here. I I can try. I can try. Yeah, why not? Sure. You know what? What's sure. What's the worst that sure. could happen? It, uh, mm, um, yeah, I'll try. I'll try. I'll try. <laughs> All right. See it. Can only go so poorly again. Hey, all right, all right. Uh, remind me, for help, do I add anything to it or is it just straight? Uh, that is plus your history with uh, McGuire. Okay, that would be a nine. Awesome, all now right. Now we're talking. So, McGuire, you for get- For you, my man. You get plus one to your- uh, All to your right, role. all right. So, uh, plus one, plus hot. Let's see how it goes. Sin, I mean, Sin will say to this to... this boy, "Oh, listen, I'm 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 sorry I shook your head like that back there. You know, I, I didn't I didn't realize you you were you know you were that dying. And that's on me. <laughs> I think this kid just like kind of like struggling to look at you through half lidded eyes is just kind of like just nodding along. Um, what'd you do? How'd you do, McGuire? Well, with help, we managed to get it all the way up to a six. Oh, all right. And so uh, it ain't happening. At which point I think that. I think that this kid reaches forward and grabs you by your lapels uh, and you realize that like one of these hands that draws away is covered in blood and leaves uh, a little spot on your uh, uh, kind of gear and looks at you and just says, Alpha Dag's got a, a, an, uh, he's got an arm me. And then um, leans forward and you see the light leave his eyes. Meg, did- Fucking hell. Meg, did he say an arm or an army? I didn't really hear that. He kind of, he kind of tapered off at the end. Don't the, make no kind of difference. An arm, well, I, can't, I think it kind of does. Either way, we're fucked. Uh, <sighs> Alex, she's going to turn and just kind of go back into the the main area. And yeah. That, um, mm -hmm. McGuire is going to also stalk in after, uh, after Sin. Um... What, uh, I, I'm trying to decide who, who I want to tell about this. <laughs> um, like who, uh, I want to like call a town meeting. How do you guys feel about that? Is that okay. fun? That seems we fine. Like that. that seems fine. Although I do think as soon as Sin gets into the, the dining dining area the bar uh she would go is um is daxo back at the bar on his spinny seat on their spinny seat <laughs> uh, she she would go over and like put her hands on their shoulders uh, and stop the spinning and just kind of lean forward and whisper in their ear we've got a dead one back there and just <laughs> and then lean back up and then go and sit back down that that is exactly what i was hoping you were gonna do <laughs> um i think daxo just kind of um uh, kind of glances over at Max very briefly, um, and then uh, and then uh, scuttles off. And yeah, I think that Max is is looking apprehensively at the two of you, and kind of like looking after into the room, and just kind of like nods in that direction as if asking, "What just happened?" 
look, it's not my fault, all right? I did not know he was that delicate or else I wouldn't have done the head shake thing, all right? I wouldn't have done it. I would have found another method. Is he I, dead? You know. Yeah, yeah, he's dead. You killed him? Well, uh, you know, I mean, he came in pretty banged up. Like, the, I, I'm certain that I... You know, I may have had a hand in it, but yeah, you, know, you probably would have died anyway. It's, it's a very harsh environment out there. Mm. And mm. It, it occurs to all of you that the one who actually did the murking here uh, was Max. Max fired the shot. Right. Yeah, so Maguire just looks at Max. You got one, mate. Or another one. I don't know how many you taken down. Judged by the look of you, probably a lot. We gotta get out of here. Yeah, damn straight, mate. What? Well, what do you mean we gotta get out of here? Uh, like a, a trip, drive? It's something like that, my love. Uh, there's, there's gonna be a lot of angry. Really ugly people coming here with really angry weapons and probably guns and probably uh, oh knives and blades. And I like knives. Be really loud and I'm loud. Uh, yeah. So uh, we got to get to them before they get to us. Hmm. As as you say that, you see Daxo coming back from that storage room and there's like kind of a, a bloody drag mark to that storage room that you know has no exit yeah we we've already thoroughly established that daxo can get in and out of the storage room that has no exit yes um it's, I feel like it's everybody super... glances at the blood the blood streak and just kind of goes back to what they're doing <laughs> <laughs> are we going somewhere well, that all depends. It seems like Mag here wants to go go visit these people. Well, bring them bring them a, a quiche, like you try and make some sort of a peace offering. What's a quiche? Yeah, something like that. <sighs> Is a quiche like a frog? Is it yeah, that something big? like that? We don't we don't have an army. Do you care? I'm going. Any of you are welcome to join me? Oh, except for no. you, stranger. You're coming along and it's going to be mandatory. Oh, but... And I'm looking at Max, obviously. Uh, Ma no, he's a new friend. Stay. Yeah. And we're going to have a friendly-like road trip. Oh, then I'm... Then I then I'm go. I go. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to go. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're going to send me to an early grave, and I did not sign up for that, but I suppose I'll go to. I can't let these the children all going off by themselves. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Look, look at this. You can see wrinkles. There's going to be knives, guns. Yeah? I like that. Not I nearly like enough. Where are you going? Dax and we're going to go on a road trip. Mm. Can I bring my new bike? Yeah, sure. I can bring your new bike. You can bring, you know, everybody can bring their new bikes. Everybody can bring everything that they want to bring. It's out of control, Maguire. It's out of control. Out of control the second those boys rolled into town. Yeah. Well, He's I suppose getting you're more right. in control. Mm. So, stranger. Those boys was chasing you. I reckon you know where they come from. Yes, right. Right, so you're going to take me and uh, anyone else who's fool enough to me. come with. Me. And you're going to take us back there. Me. we got to find this dog and, uh, well, way I figure it, cut off the head. <laughs> he looks at all of you it says a suicide might be mate suicide just sitting here and that's putting in suicide on everybody else in this town and i ain't doing yeah, that and, and you're the <laughs> sin's gonna jump in yeah and you're the one that chase and then brought them here you're the one who brought suicide on no it's murder you're the one who brought them all over here 
Uh, he... I'd say Sin's got the right of it. He is... I, I, I'm going to ask you a very important question here. What did you guys do about the sawed off that was attached to his hip? I kicked it away from him before I do we remember that happening. into the bar. So as far as we're aware, there. it's still on the ground outside the bar. Daxo has it. Okay. And um, wanted to make sure there wasn't any confusion. And he, realizing the odds are against him, takes the uh, kind of like the estimation of all of you and starts getting up and he looks at all of you and says, you got a ride. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kerosene is like in her element now, like at that mention and, um, uh, 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 McGuire, can, can I show him the garage? Yeah. Knock yourself out, kid. Come on, I'll show you my friends. Come on, come on. And she's like, I'm like skittering out the out the door, I think around, uh, I don't know, we haven't really described the rest of this little town too much. So I'm gonna assume like on the opposite end is probably an old decrepit warehouse storage facility that has been converted into a garage slash kerosene's nest of <laughs> deranged vehicles that she puts together mm -hmm. absolutely and as you guys are are making your way across town um i think that the there's kind of like this sparse number of people um but you know people are starting to kind of like you can it's kind of like that hushed whisper in like kind of like uh, uh wild west pictures or uh, or, uh, or westerns rather where they're kind of like talking amongst themselves and they're all looking at the stranger that's kind of moving across and as you're you are making a way the thing that you guys have always taken for granted living here the entire time uh, has been that big yawning cavern uh, that leads into what used to be uh, this uh, Black Rock's uh, uh, historical mining facility uh, history, I should say, history, uh, uh, big and historical like mining facility, uh, and it just yawns open like a demonic mouth. And as you guys are walking past, he looks, at, takes one glance at it, says, "How deep's that go?" Far. Uh, pr uh, pretty much endless. I mean, when nobody's gone and explored the entire thing, we have. Okay, well, most most of the people haven't gone and explored the entire thing, except for very, very, very few. His eyes flick back to you, flick back to the mine, and then flick uh, back to the direction of the garage. Uh, Kerosene, I'm assuming you're still leading. Yeah, uh, she's like hop skipping all the way there. Uh, she like waves a like her prosthetic hands at any passersby uh before getting to the garage and then pulling pulling back the grate to reveal i'm gonna guess that we've got maybe three or four working vehicles in there um ranging from bikes to i'm playing mad max and i'm not a car expert <laughs> to some utilitarian like vehicles that she's souped up herself that look downright dangerously souped up, as in there's a mount for Lancers to stand on. Uh, there's like engines yeah. that look like they spit fire. Uh, definitely way too much NOS. Can, can I suggest um, a shout out to another uh, great show here on Flights of Fandom. May I suggest an El Camino VW bug technical? <laughs> sure. All right. Yeah. Why not? I am. Uh, I mean, that's, that's in there now. Insane. So yeah. Uh, but but like clearly they are like they're they're deranged. They've got armor on. Some of them have like spikes. They they seem to mimic a lot of cars that have been seen like throughout the the wasteland. There are some bikes that look suspiciously like 
bike scene in other canyons, like Canyon Riders. There's, uh, I think the bug has all of the hedgehog spikes on it. Um, and of course there's like the, there's a, there's one, there's one of the vehicles that isn't ready. Like, is it, it's not done. It's like, she found like a truck part, I think, but hasn't finished it yet, but there's definitely like a dead engine on there. That definitely looks like she's trying to build a polecat nest, mm -hmm. but hasn't figured out how to get it right as evidence of it having crashed down onto the furthest part of the garage. And there is a hole in the skylight. Uh, that she has just never attempted to fix. Um, and uh, she's just she's just standing there, do these work? And uh, kerosene, as you are uh, kind of showing off the garage, Max looks at all of you and then points out and says, that one. Which one does he point out, kerosene? Oh, I think it's the one with the Lancer position that requires two people, one to be a gunner and one to be driving. Okay. How many, and will that seat everybody? It should, in theory. Some people will be crammed in the back. Uh, I mean, it, it like like at least two people can sit in the back. One person will be should be standing running the Lance on the outside of the vehicle. All right. So, and if you don't care about safety, then two people can theoretically fit in the front. All right. Then. So I guess two people can fit in the front is what I'm is what I'm getting at. Okay. So does this mean that we're going to get a second vehicle, you think? Only if somebody doesn't want to be in that car. Anybody have a preference? I mean, we have um so we have these What's the situation with the bikes? Did we wreck them all? No, I've got two two one? two of them are two. sitting out front. I haven't brought them back to the uh uh the the garage yet. Cuz they just they just got here by virtue of death. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say you you guys if you would like you can take those muscle cycles with you. Uh I yeah. mean it would be a shame not to. It's more like, do we want to go fast and light, or do we want to go in like a tank? Yes. I mean, we can, why not both? <laughs> yes. I, I, right. I think the answer is yes. Because okay. um, theoretically, like two people can just be on that one vehicle that Max pointed out. One person can be a, a Lancer. One person can drive. Two people can be on a bike. Uh, Dak, like, like anyone could just, we could have a third vehicle if you wanted two or three people can be in the car or one person is riding on yeah. the back of the bike let's, say, let's make it simple why don't we do why don't we do the one car and two bikes i like that all right you so uh when last we left before the break you guys had identified some uh fantastic uh vehicular weapons uh in the form of a uh lancer tank or a tank lancer with a uh a spot uh for either boarding or for uh just launching lances at uh opposing vehicles uh and also as well as two muscle cycles so we rejoin all of you in your moments as you prepare to do your worst what does that look like so knowing what I know of uh, Alpha Dag, formerly uh, my buddy Omega, my good, good gang mate, uh, how long would I guess we have? Like how long before uh, he and his guys realize the guys they sent are not coming back? and are able to track us back to this location, back to uh, Blackrock. Uh, read a sitch for me. Cool. Doop, 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 doop. I got a 10 plus some stuff that doesn't matter. All right, on a 10, ask three. Where's my best escape route? Way in, way past. Which enemy is most vulnerable to me? Which enemy is the biggest threat? What should I be on the lookout for? What's my enemy's true position? Who's in control here? All right. 
So uh, I think for sure I want to start with what should I be on the lookout for? All right. So knowing, remembering your relationship with Omega, um, you realize that he is fairly sadistic. And basically, uh, I think one of the reasons that you kind of uh, probably thought that whole re outfit was a bad scene was because... Um, he had taken to hunting people for sport. Uh, so one of the things that you should be on the lookout for are the kind of psychopaths that that attitude will draw. Um, so that's one. Uh, cool. Okay. What is, uh, what's your second question? All right. Uh, what is my enemy's true position? Uh, your enemy's true position, as you kind of triangulate thinking about your own way uh, that you have made it back to Black Rock. Uh, I think that this means that you don't, you have a very strong sense that Alpha Dag, there's more defensible locations and more situations with uh, uh, places with better resources available to you uh, far to the north. So at least a couple of days journey. All right. Meaning, yeah, I th we meaning it'll take us a few days, but we might have a few days. You might have maybe at best if they're not like rolling for break. Uh, uh, if they're not rolling uh, for uh, for broke, maybe a day, day and a half. Yeah. All right. Uh, and let's say. Ugh. I'm debating between two. Um, which enemy is most vulnerable to me? All right. So the enemy that is most vulnerable to you. Uh, I think that you know that these this patrol, this kind of like trio that was sent here, they were recon. Uh, so... I think that the the biggest thing here is the weakest but also the most important thing is just getting around patrols and getting around recon uh so the idea is that they are the most vulnerable but they're also the most important because they're the eyes and the ears uh so that will uh give you uh i'll give you that for your knowledge cool, cool. uh okay Experience Battle Babe Sin, what are you doing for preparations? Uh, I think that uh, Sin would probably check in with the kids <laughs> because as much as she would never admit it, she's feeling a little protective of these of this bunch, this batch. Um, so it would be checking with Kerosene. Um, if Daxo's around, checking, checking in with them, but that's it's kind of hard to tell when when Daxa will materialize, <laughs> um, but also uh, checking in with Kyrosine to be like, so, uh, you know, figuring out who's going to ride what vehicles, where everybody wants to be, trying to get situated. Uh, also, so Sin can figure out where where she is going to be. And also uh, if she, you know, can take one of the uh, one of the muscle bikes. Because technically they are kerosenes and, you know, would never intrude. You, you, you can ride on the bike? Yeah. I haven't had a chance to make it as pretty as the rest of my friends, but uh, it works. Well, you know, and I, it, I would just want to, I would take very good care of it and, you know, just break it in for you a little bit. It's just, yeah. she's, she's. No, you, you can, you can break it. She, she's if, so good. If you break it, I get to fix it. Oh, perfect. Oh, I'm so glad we have an understanding. <laughs> she's just so excited. I think, yeah, I think that's most of what, and also probably gathering up, like going about all of our things, grabbing some, some blades here, tucking them, you know, into various uh, straps and things like that. Um, any other remotely dangerous things she can find. Awesome. Excellent. I love that. Uh, so yeah, now you have the run of one of those muscle cycles. So make sure you got that stat block available to you. 
Um, I will one thing I did kind of neglect to say, um, uh, David uh, or McGuire about your um, your role there as well is if there anything like the recon lot that you guys just uh, 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 messed up, uh, not only are they vulnerable, they're dumb as hell, too. <laughs> yeah. so sure, sure. I was going to say, like, someone like Sin and yourself, depending on how you play it, like, might be an easy way in, so to speak. Uh, Kerosene, what are you getting up to? Uh, Kerosene, I think, is putting, like, final touches on some of the vehicles just because some of them haven't been taken out in a while most of them are scrap that uh mcguire or sin have just let her play with um you know better that she be blowing up stuff in her garage than accidentally setting fire to buildings in the town uh and uh i think she's also <laughs> i think she's uh flipping open her wrists and pouring uh fuel down uh the line for her uh flamethrowers that are underneath her prosthesis for both of her hands mm -hmm. which i i'm not actually sure if max clocked that that kerosene has two prosthesis or that you know they're actually attached to a flamethrower pack <laughs> that she has but right now like th she's not wearing the pack so she's just putting in the fuel she clicks back her hands and then she like grabs the rest of like uh, this like bulky little backpack that she that she puts on and she like connects up uh, the rest of like the fuel lines with that. She lets it uh, like and, and then she puts she she saddles on like uh, an extra bonus uh, tank of fuel for herself. She puts it into like the Lancer seat and like bolts it down in case she needs it. Uh, she's also, I think there's a moment where she's probably mirroring you, Sin, where like she sees you putting uh, together like all of your weapons and like she's, she grabs like a bunch of, she doesn't really have any weapons. She mostly uses the flamethrower if she needs it, uh, but she grabs like her toolkit essentially and like uses that as like the mimicry of putting together her whole like utility belt of weapons. So there's a, a wrench, uh, a screwdriver and a hammer. <laughs> and they're all, all on her on they're all on her belt now awesome like like but they're sitting there the same way that like she the denies and like a holstered pistol probably would she looks really pleased Distracts. well you know well as pleased as she can you can't tell what she looks like underneath that gas mask and i think uh as you kind of do this you catch max kind of looking at you and says that's dangerous and just like pushing, like pointing to the pack on your back. That's a, that's a window. That is. I'm, 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 I'm good. I'm good with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like I, fire, and I can get along. Um, and and the rest of my weapons is dangerous too. Uh, my other friends, she pulls out like each of like the little the the the, the tools that she put on her toolkit, and she's like, "This is uh, screwy. Say hi." Oh, hi. Hello. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, 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 Mister. Thanks for joining us. And then, like, like, and and this is this. this, this. <laughs> this is, I'm killed. <laughs> and uh, she pulls out oh, like. <laughs> <laughs> Are you good? No. Are you done? <laughs> she pulls out. She pulls out the wrench this next. <laughs> Like this is wrenched. Uh, um, say hi. Actually, uh, as you oh, oh Max, and then um, and she pulls out, and this is kneecap. She pulls out the 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 uh, the hammer, and it just goes fuck off. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Actually, nice. as you do What's this, <laughs> all right. I I love this too much. Uh, kerosene. I'd like you to open uh, your brain to the world's psychic maelstrom. I just did. I think Marcy opened her brain. To the <laughs> Yeah. This is kneecap. Yeah. Say hello. It, Fuck that's off. the apocalypse world rule for moves. Yeah. When you do it, you do it. Yeah. You you when you do the move, you do the move. I wasn't expecting you all to completely collapse. <laughs> oh my god. Uh roll plus weird for me, would you? Uh sure. It's not great. <laughs> I rolled a four. All right. Um I think that all right, on a miss, be prepared for the worst. Um okay. Well, 
I'm already hearing voices. So so as you are uh, doing this with kneecap and kneecap says, fuck off. Um, you you look up like look to look for approvingly at uh, uh, Max and you see in front of him uh, just seemingly keeping pace with him. Her eyes never like darting away from his face or anything. They just look intrepidly at him uh, is a little sallow girl in a white dress. Um, who just seems to follow him. And as you look behind him, uh, you just see a trail of people, uh, all of them speaking in turn that you realize that he can oh. hear that says, why couldn't you save us? Kirstein is still holding the cap and is just, oh, that's a lot. I, I I hear th them too, and she like knocks on the on 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 her mask. This this is Guzzle. Yeah, he talks to me too sometimes. It says all kinds of things. Sometimes it's helpful, but you still you have a lot more than I do. I like the little girl though. And his his eyes kind of like flicker and kind of go wild a little bit, and then. Settle. He just nods. Daxo, what are you doing? Um, I think Daxo is sitting in the truck waiting, or standing next to the truck waiting. Um, everything, everybody's been bustling around, getting stuff ready, and I think Daxo just again, once again, pops up like a creepy little weasel. Um, and uh, uh, he's changed clothing. He is now wearing what some might recognize as a um, as a looks to be like a very heavily repaired and scavenged scouts uniform. Um, there is um, there is a very odd. He's wearing a hooded kind of short cloak um, and has what appears to be a. It looks kind of like a flagpole. That's had the um, the round brass head hammered into a blade, um, and his most noticeably though his face is painted with a very distinct, cartoonish, menacing, cartoonish, like it's like if somebody took a mascot or an imagery from like a children's a children's book or an amusement park and made it unsettling like it is it is there are some bright colors and there's big eyes that have been painted over his eyes but there is it is like oh this is what happens this is what it looks like when a world dies yeah um and he's just leaning against uh leaning uh the for our audience, uh, the the Scouts are an organization um, similar to Boy Scouts in America or Girl Scouts um, that exist in Australia. Um, and this appears just like to them. them pulling the dead bodies away and <laughs> hiding them in places. All them merit badges. <laughs> All right, it's, yeah. it's good to be skilled in various things. You never know when you're going to need something for later. And um, I have to ask, Daxo, did somebody else lovingly apply this uh, uh, this war paint or paint as it were? Somebody else definitely applied this war paint. Awesome. Okay. Um, I think with the hood thrown up, there, it casts a very uncomfortable shadow. It is the most nightmarish theme park Disney nightmare. Okay. Um, of it, but. In a very earnest, like, uh, if uh, if it's cool, I think Maguire probably approaches you at this point. You're painted up there, Dexo. Hey, you're looking wicked. We're leaving. Any journey must be accompanied by the appropriate rites, Maguire. 
Too true, too true. <sighs> Got a favor to ask you, kid. Your mates. Like you were uh, telling the stranger. They know their way around the tunnels down there, right? You think uh, they'd be willing to guide the people down, put them somewhere out of sight for a few days, keep them somewhere safe? Do you think the people will be okay with that, Daxo? I don't exactly know that they will want to be around us. They don't like us like you do, Daxo. Uh, and you realize he just yeah, said his kid. own name multiple times and a little bit of a sorry, Maguire. I don't much care if they like you or not, kid. Uh, right now, they need your help. Hey, listen. And uh, Maguire will kind of, you know, sit down next to you in the back of the truck. People around here, they may not have taken a shine to you right away. But I see you. See what you're about. You're, uh... You're an odd bunch. Come a little off to people. Right? In your ways? Specific-like. But I think... I think you're some good kids. And uh, your ways, they're your own. That counts for something out here. You dig me? I won't dig you. Not yet. Well, when it's my time, kid, sure as hell hope it's you and not somebody else. Uh, Daxo gives a very genuine smile to Maguire at that, which is still creepy, um, but has, like, is clearly, like, I don't know, has a little bit more vulnerability than this kind of, um, this smile that you're so used to seeing from uh, him and the other kids. Send word to your boys. See if they'll take the people down. I'll talk to the townsfolk. Try to get them to go along. If they promise not to do anything bad, the Kalbari faithful will protect them. I promise. Right on, lad. And uh, I think you you liter you see Daxo just kind of um, just give a a short um, a short little. From one side and you see one of these other kids uh kind of um lean out from around the corner of a building and um daxo uh kind of vaults down and scurries off to talk to uh this person cool um if uh if we're cool with it uh i want to um I'm trying to think what order is interesting. Um, I, I, are Kerosene and Max still um, still like working the bikes in in that area? Presumably, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah I think Kerosene right. is is trying to get everything together. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'll I'll head over to to the two of you. And, uh, yeah, Max just kind of, like, snaps, uh, his eyes flick up, snap, again, that assessing look, and then just kind of waits. How we doing over here, Kerosene? Good, uh, yeah. Rides yeah. looking in, uh, ship shape? Yeah, go, uh, we can go, go fast. Yeah, that's what I like to hear. Well, I figure we only got a couple of hours before we gotta push off. You can deal with that? Yeah, yeah, I've been on a road trip in a lot, long time. Good. Hope you're looking forward to it. It's, uh, it's gonna be a dicey one. I, 
I think I like Dicey. I like how it sounds. Yeah. I figured you would. Mm-hmm. Stranger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where are these boys? Where'd you see them last? Because that's where we're headed. And he takes his hand, points roughly north. Patch of bad land in the middle. Ground's gone sour. Long route around. Easy to get through. But hazardous. They uh, come upon you in the badlands. You didn't see no camp or nothing. Fast. Recon. Saw the larger part. Made my way the long way. But that patrol. What followed me? All right. So. Find a patrol. We find the rest of them. And he kind of like. As you kind of like nod and like are ready to um, go back and make your further preparations, he grabs you and pulls you close um, in a way that, you know, it's not threatening, but he just whispers in your ear. This goes sour. This is on you. And he lets go. McGuire gives him a nod. What's Kerosene's reaction to that, like, sudden... I don't know if Max saw it, but she had kneecap out just briefly. And then when she know when she heard that he was just talking to you, she she put it away. Mm-hmm. You can't see expressions through her gas mask, but I think McGuire knows her body language very well. She she went from a very scary like humming to herself, tinkering like on the car to immediately as if like a rabbit had sensed danger like into a different person where she like drew up to her, like her full 16 years of height and like immediately looked like she would have like murdered somebody and then reassessed the situation and like a flip switch. (laughs) just went right back to doing what she was doing. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, McGuire walks away and he uh, calls back over his shoulder as he, uh, as he's walking Get yourself some rest, stranger. You're gonna need it. And I'm gonna go look for Sin. Sin is probably... She would probably be back kind of... She has a spot. A place, as it were. um, That she's kind of hunkered down and made her own um and she's back there gathering up things because she no one really knows from whence she was before the place she was before the place she was before the place she's been hither and thither um and she has little bits and bobs from all sorts of places that she's been and so she's kind of going through and trying to rifle around and see what's worth bringing what's worth hiding because she doesn't trust anything out of her sight so she's kind of maneuvering all of her things around yeah um and mcguire is there in the doorway don't loom i can sense you there Good. Means the instincts are on point. What do you want? I know you're packing up. You don't gotta come on this. Yeah, well, I'm not having you take the kids out just on your own with some dirty stranger who just rolled in like a tumbleweed. All right, that's a good instinct too. Mm. But I'm telling you, Sin... There's a good chance we ain't coming back from this one. Yeah, well, every time I go anywhere, there's a good chance I'm not coming back. So me, with all that gloom and doom. Man, if you looked around, there's a lot of people who don't come back from anything. The, your, your friend's son or your enemy's son, I don't know who he is to you, but you, you, the kid that we were talking to back there, he didn't come back. A lot of people don't come back. I'm not worried about that sort of thing. She kind of, she doesn't really look at him. She's still, like, messing around with all of her stuff. 
All right. I want you to be sure about it. I had to come give you the chance. And she kind of like slams her stuff down and then turns around. Listen, Meg, I make my own chances. I'm a grown woman. You're not my real dad, so I don't need you making all these kinds of statements for me. What do you want? What do you want me to say? I'm not going to come along and just sit here and worry about all of y'all like, like some sort of a matriarchal kind of... Get out of here! Why are you even in my house? All right. I have been dismissed. I'll, uh... I'll see you at the trucks in. Yeah, I'll be down there. Just <laughs> and uh, as he turns around, I think she's gonna probably call after him. Oh, before you go, uh, what 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 time are we meeting down there anyway? Well, figure we only got a few hours, so uh, get what you can get together. Got to talk to uh, got to talk to somebody about uh, getting the town secured. Then we got a ride. <laughs> Yeah, well, that makes sense. I'll be, you know, I'll be, I'll be down there before you're even down there. Anyway, so you know, I wouldn't even worry about it. Good. And she's gonna go back to what she was doing. <laughs> okay. And uh, yeah, McGuire's gonna kind of walk off, like shaking his head. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And there's one more person I want to find. All right, who's that person? And that person is, um, that person is whoever is the most respected person in the town. Uh, who, you know, whoever is kind of like the, the person who can, who can rally the townsfolk, who can, who they'll. Maguire talking to himself to. in a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, there's a fella, uh, uh, who is uh, named Father Walkie. And uh, Father Walkie is very well respected in that um, he seems to have this kind of almost prescience about him. Um, you know, just this very deep, like very dark skin, um, you know, this uh, 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 kind of just very uh, uh, deep eyes that kind of look into the dream time. Uh, of this psychic maelstrom, this new wasteland. Uh, and uh, I think that he is, I think you can find him either holding court or uh, by himself, if you'd prefer. Um, hmm. I don't know. What's more interesting? What do we think is more interesting? I gotta leave that to everybody else. What do you guys think? I think he's by himself, let's say, uh, to to make things uncomplicated. Yeah. Um, so I think yeah. McGuire goes looking <laughs> for him uh, and uh, probably finds him, like, in transit, you know, b uh, across town between, uh, you know, between two places. Yeah, and I think that this is kind of like a, a walk that you have seen him do occasionally. Uh, where he kind of like walks the whole of Black Rock. Um, and this is just like, it's kind of like his means of kind of like keeping track of everything. But you realize it's also kind of like a meditation uh, as he's kind of like wandering around this. Uh, he's roped in like lean, wiry muscle. He's uh, very kind of like thin uh, uh, and lean, but at the same time, you know, just... Uh, like has the athleticism of a much younger man uh as uh you encounter him um he seems to just be kind of talking to himself and you just hear him say to himself uh something you have heard him say many times which is that it said the only way to get through the abyss to heaven that's the only way to ride the black highway eternal only to emerge into the light and then he just kind of like shakes himself out of it. And uh, he looks at you and says, what can us two do for you? Good day, father. Uh, a word? Have as many as you need. 
What can I do for you, Maguire? <sighs> Scuttlebutt got to you about the dust up outside me bar. I hear everything. Right. So, uh, them boys, turns out they're pretty bad news. And they're connected to more boys who are even worse news. Uh, fleas are a the... dog as it is. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I think them fleas are coming in our direction, so... I mean to get to them before they get to us. Got a crew together. Gonna go out. See if we can't uh, prevent some serious damage coming in on Black Rock. We might not come back. What can us two do for you? You gotta get the townsfolk together. You talk to Dexo. One of them Kalbara kids. You know him? I know of him. Right, well. Them kids. They know the mine tunnels better than anyone. So this you is... You can. Hmm. You get as many people as you can get together. And you let those kids lead them into the tunnels. Where they'll be safe. And he looks and he says, And it is the dream time then. What told us to. Riding the black highway. Finding the way to heaven. Yeah. That's what we're gonna do. If we don't come back, and then boys show up, my advice to you is this place better be a ghost town. So, I know you have not necessarily asked for this, but I would like you to roll. Uh, I will say this. There is something that you get the sense that he wants to tell you. And so I would like you to roll. Let me figure out what it is you're going to roll. I think that this is uh I think this is kind of roll plus hot. Okay. Am I it, are we looking at a move? Uh we are looking at I kind of like almost like a seduce or a manipulate someone, but this is like let's just say this is like what your talk to him, your earnest talk to him has done. Well, we're looking at a 14. <laughs> that, that'll do. As, Which I think is the highest possible roll you can get in the game. If you uh, if you uh, get all the way up to improve the second tier of improvements, you can get up to a 15. But the okay, okay. But, yeah. I did, I did it is the highest roll well. you can get. You shall not <laughs> dull his triumph. <laughs> Um, I will tell you this. All right. He leads you, uh, to a, uh, small kind of shack that is on the other side of the mine. Uh, and this shack seems to be locked with a very thick chain. I think Daxo and, uh, I think that even Daxo has not been necessarily privy to this because, of how vigilantly uh, it is guarded. In fact, you see kind of like one of the local kind of militia uh, that is, uh, I think, probably one of Father Waki's sons uh, and is kind of like looking, uh, playing lookout here. And uh, he uh, says he kind of relieves uh, uh, this guard kind of tapping him on the shoulder and procures from around his neck um this uh kind of very uh uh, uh look like it was made in like an hour in 2022 key uh that's just been beaten to hell and unclips the lock unlocks it 
pulls off the chain and through the door you see there is a small crate uh, that is marked with a very large danger stencil. And he flips open the top of this uh, wooden crate and picks up two tightly wrapped sticks with a little wrapped round cord sticking out of the end of them. And he says... When the time comes, when you need it, make them shine so bright. And you may mark down two sticks of dynamite. Tremendous. All right. And with that, um, his, uh, his daughter arrives to uh, relieve uh, her brother uh, of guard duty. Father Waki locks up the shack and says to you, us to say you have our blessing. Thank you, mate. Means a lot. And... Uh, this point i believe unless anybody has anything further they'd like to add you set out on the road I, north yeah go ahead i actually uh yeah daxo is going to talk to um would like to talk to the siblings um uh, so one of the fun things about uh, my playbook, um, which is I, I have I have I have actually been playing completely off my playbook. I haven't come up with any extra bullshit. I adore this insane crap. Um, so um, I am inviting these these people are being invited into my den, um, which is a thing that I have. <laughs> I have chosen three options. Uh, one of them, which is uh, an uncertain number of your siblings and kind, no two alike. Um, with one exception, I decided there is an exception to that rule. There is a pair of twins that nobody except for us can tell apart. Um, they're named Tim and Tam. Okay. Um, and uh, I think it is to these twins that Daxo is talking. Um, and also, uh, this is also how Daxo gets into everybody's places. Uh, that from here you can get into anywhere from the from the under tunnels from the kalbari tunnels mm -hmm. um but uh i think um daxo is good wants to talk to tim and tam and uh warn um he want he he is going to warn them not to let the outsiders into the glass caves because they are not prepared for that. Of course we would never let them into the glass caves, Brother Daxo. Don't lie to me, Tim. And Tam kind of looks and says, Why would we lie? Because you like chaos. Got me there. This could be our undoing, allowing others into the sacred places. So why are you so want to do it? Because it could also be our salvation. Emit, if necessary, share the water. This is a mighty ask, Daxo. They've protected us long enough. Something for nothing is not a bargain, and we always bargain. What do these people have to offer the Kalbari faith? They have shielded us 
for long enough. I'd like you... It is our turn. All right. I would like you to... Now tell me, is that a move that guarantees success, or do you roll for it? I'm going to... Um... Ooh, can I do something creepy to guarantee success? Always. Uh, Daxo is going to pull out um, a hidden blade, uh, which was, is concealed up his sleeve, to his very delicately, perfectly rolled sleeve. Um, and it is uh, this blade appears to be made from um, flaked and ch uh, like uh, chipped glass of some nature. It looks almost like obsidian, but it's got a greener hue to it. Um, and there's something a little bit wrong about it and, um, uh, just takes it and does the classically stupid thing, um, starts to go to do the classically stupid thing of drawing your, drawing your blade across your hand. Why people do that? And I don't know, um, and thinks better of it. And then instead, uh, draws a, a, a a, a very, very, very thin line, which opens more than one might expect, but it is extraordinarily sharp and um, holds out a hand, uh, holds out the arm as blood begins to run down it um, and drips, uh, begins to drip. And uh, with the expectation that they will capture the blood. Um, my, my question to you is, would they capture it in a vessel or would they sup upon it? Uh, they would capture it in a vessel. Okay. So at that point, Tim uh, just pro uh, produces a kind of like almost mason jar uh, as quickly as uh, like you could draw that blade from your hand. That glass seems to catch the blood um, before it even uh, has run halfway off of your arm. Uh, and... I think at this point, uh, Tim and Tam both kind of nod in consecutive order, realizing, you know, the gravity of this vow. Um, Daxo holds out a hand, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, for the sake of this not being dumb, they give me a stapler. Um, and there's just, uh, just while dead eyeing. Kachunk, 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 kachunk. It's just a regular, it's a red swing line stapler um, and just hammers it in uh, just to just to keep it closed a little bit. Waste not the water. Waste nothing. We look forward to seeing you again. If, if not, the water wills it so. And if the water wills it not so, we will look forward to meeting so many new friends. Don't do anything dumb. And Daxo turns and walks away. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Tremendous. Love it. Awesome, guys. Uh, okay. Any last minute uh, preparations or are you guys ready to brave the northern badlands? Get on the I think that my, my main question, uh, when Daxo arrives, is his arm visible or is it? Yes, uh, his, uh, he's got he's got this very old, very heavily patched scouts uniform, um, which is a very uh, it's a, like a khaki, um, a desert khaki, and it is rolled up to just above the elbow. He's got a, a very faded kerchief um, with uh, with and a bunch of merit badges on the left uh, left uh, breast of this jacket. But there is very yes the uh, the staples and the blood and like the ble raw gory line are very visible. Oh, that is not going to escape Sin's attention. <laughs> Immediately, she'd be like, "Oi, hey, Daxo, come yes. here right now." Why? Don't. <laughs> and um. Don't what? <laughs> and she's she's just gonna go over to him, and she would uh, look at his arm, and then I imagine everybody's here at this point. Yeah, I would say so. I think so, right? Yeah, we're like in the garage, like <laughs> gathered around the truck, right? Yeah. Or the uh, what? What are we calling it? 
Sorry. The, the ride. We'll, we'll get the back rides. to this in a second. Please continue. Um, yeah, so I imagine she unceremoniously just like, probably a little bit roughly grabs Daxo's arm. It's probably going to hurt just because she's not... Daxo although, does not flinch. Oh, I'm sure he doesn't. But like, although motherly intentioned, uh, you know, so she she grabs his arm. She's like, what? What happened here? And she's immediately going to look at Max. What did you do? And and Max just looks and, and just says, I was here. <laughs> just, just throws his hands up. Knows better not to get between a mama bear and her cub. So... <laughs> Dexter, what happened here? What is all this? What happened to your arm? Your arm's all... Are these staples? <laughs> yes. I, I like it. It's shiny. He, this is... And she's, she's going to take and just like... T- I mean, she did this when she was dealing with the other... When she was walking over the table before, so she just tears more of her shirt off. And she's going to just like kind of wrap it around. <laughs> I think... The shirt uh, is, is just leaving. Yeah, I think at that point, like... <laughs> Yeah, what was it? Like, Max dutifully, like, averts his eyes <laughs> as this is happening. Um, she already, I know she already tore some off when she was walking to the table of the uh, the goon squad, so. Mm-hmm. Is, is, it, is the shirt basically just a crop top at this point? Is that, are we just tearing horizontally? Or is this more of, like, a, uh, like, a untasteful, um, what what's the tassel vibe going on? It was a crop top before, but now she's probably just, like, she probably just tears a tassel and like <laughs> starts to wrap your arm and then like ties the rest of it together <laughs> somehow. And so then she's wrapping it around. It's uh, a more arm. cropped top. <laughs> Croppier. <laughs> Croppier. The, the croppest. I would, the cro- croppest. <laughs> uh, I would like you to go ahead and roll uh, me. I think uh, this would it be. Works so well. I was going to say roll me cool to heal or to, uh, to, um, to do a healing move, essentially. Cool, you say? All right. Mm-hmm. Um, seven. That would be a seven. Okay. Uh, let me double check. So when you heal another player's harm, uh, you get plus one history with them. I will say on a seven, and I should have marked a segment on your uh, clock for that uh, for that knife uh, wound. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll do that now. Actually, you um, don't have to because uh, oh. I think Sin uh, bandages this up. Uh, how do you kind of like address uh, you dress the wound? Um, she starts just wrapping, and she 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 is grumbling this entire time, and the the logistical part of me cringes right now. But she's she's going to just like take and reach and just like pull all the staples out. Mm. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. You're gonna get sick. These are gonna make you sick. <laughs> and just she just keeps saying that these are terrible for you have you ever had metal in your body before this is awful you're not supposed to put this in here and then she just like starts wrapping it and kind of like closes the wound together <laughs> and uh just kind of wraps it and then like ties it super tight yeah absolutely i like I, I think you know if you wanted to even be like artful with like a heated needle or something off of like uh, uh off of, well, of uh, the engine block yeah either the engine block oh, or yeah. or just the pilot light off of kerosene's hands something like that <laughs> um, oh yes yes yeah and uh yeah you seal the wound you uh uh remove the harm add one history to daxo uh it is done awesome yeah, and and Dax, so like, how do you react to somebody actually like trying to do their best and take care of you? I think Daxo has a. You you ever seen uh, when a um, when a cat is getting a bath and it just shuts off its brain, where it's just like, can't deal with this, can't deal with this all the time. Yes, uh, Daxo has very much like. <laughs> like not flinching, just just kind of oh, <laughs> probably sub vocalizing, just a long like ah noise. Awesome. Um, and uh, I think after all of that is done, just kind of looks and is just like, "Are we done? Are we done touching me?" Kind of uh, energy. 
Um, and yeah, go look, on, go on to you wherever you're sitting on your, your ride and whatever. Get out of here. And turns to Maguire and just says, the faithful will take the townspeople in. I've assured it. Good. Thanks, kid. All right. We ready to mount up? Ready as we'll ever be, I suppose. Uh, okay. So, item one. Mm -hmm. What have we named our car? I was real partial to uh, uh, an internal chat suggestion calling it the Grumbler. <laughs> the grumbler. All right, so the Grumbler. Yeah. Oh, you don't want any part of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, unless somebody else wants to drive, uh, McGuire is going to swing into the driver's seat of the Grumbler. And um, I think I would like this car to be one of those, like, uh, or at least part of this car, to be one of those, like, um, one of those, like, 70s cars where it's just one long seat in the front. A bench seat? Yeah, a bench seat, yes, mm -hmm. yes. I was completely blanking on the name for it. Mm -hmm. A bench seat. Um, and, like... Maguire is absolutely going to make Max sit shotgun next to him. Mm -hmm. And then, like, you know, he's like, stranger, you're riding shotgun. <laughs> and uh, for, you know, navigational purposes. Um, and then when, uh, when Maguire gets in and glances over, in between them is Daxo. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Oh my god. Okay, so we're taking one motorcycle then, because otherwise, that's I love that. I'm going. That's with that. that's what I want in my heart. That's hilarious. I'm 100 percent fine with that. Fine. We're taking the Grumbler and a motorcycle. And a motorcycle. I do. I do think though that if everyone's getting like into their respective vehicles, because Kerosene would be attaching herself via like a bungee cord to the Lancer station at the back of the vehicle. Um, I think she goes up to Max and she's like, hey, hey, before, like, if everyone else is like, she's, she's like seen a moment where they're, they're relatively alone, even if I think as McGuire's getting into the car, I, 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 I want you to know that I think that, um, I think, I think we can trust you. I, th I think you didn't mean for this to happen, but I want you to know something. Hey. If you're lying, if you're lying, or if if, uh, if this is a trap, and she goes from hunched over to like her full height, which is still sh much shorter than Max, but like she like just leans like full like like presses the gas mask almost like right up to the bridge of his nose, they're never gonna find your body. And um, yeah, absolutely. I think that as you back down you see on his, like, hands on his shoulders, uh, and one, the, that little girl that was staring at him is now, like, facing out, staring back at you, and on either side of him, however, are more of these dead uh, uh, people, and they're looking at him, and he just nods. Okay, I'm excited. Uh, and like that, that menace is completely gone as if like, again, just a switch flipped and she swings herself up onto the back of the car. And I think you actually like McGuire, you kind of feel like a funk as yeah. she's like cl clambering over onto it and strapping herself onto the outside. Yeah. And I'll, you know, I'll like tap the roof, like bonk, bonk. Yep. You good up there? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Strapped in kerosene. I'm strapping in now. Click. Seatbelt on, every kids, kids, <laughs> seatbelt on. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, and uh, Sin, you're strapped into the muscle cycle? Yeah, Sin is over on the muscle cycle, and, and I imagine when she first rolled into town, 
she probably like this i i feel i want to feel in my art that this might have been like the crusted out shell of her old cycle <laughs> that like kerosene got a hold of and made all nice and she's banky shiny and so sin is just like wrapped around it like just just hugging it and petting it she's like oh there there girl i'm back again <laughs> it's all right angry rue i'm back we're together at last <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think as you uh you kind of like uh rev up the uh handle for the ignition oh. uh it just kind of roars its approval in your ear Oh, there you go, girl. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mag, you were saying something? What? <laughs> I was saying let's ride. Yeah. <laughs> and she, she revs the engine to denote that she is ready to follow. She does not know where they're going, though, so they're going to have to leave. <laughs> All right. So, you know, honestly, I know we could probably run for a little bit uh, longer, but I think this is such a great image to end on as you all ride north to the northern badlands in the uh direction of the dog pack that uh you have been directed to max riding shotgun on the bench seat of the grumbler and uh either taking the rear or taking the lead uh sin on the mice muscle cycle and it's said that I think that all of you knew that hell was coming and following this stranger, but for the first time in a long time, it seems like you guys are meeting hell head on. And it's on that note, we're going to end tonight. So let me kill the music real quick. Uh, guys, thanks so much for joining us and uh, uh, taking part in our lovely session here. Uh, we are going to return next week with uh, the uh, hopefully the uh, beginning of their operation into uh, the uh, w uh, finding the dog pack and uh, 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 bringing them to heal, as it were. So, uh, guys, we're going to go ahead and go around the table and do uh, shout outs and plugs. Uh, we're going to go in reverse order today. Uh, Fox. Uh, shout out some plugs. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm Rocket Fox. And um, yeah, I, you know, as a shout out this time, I want to shout out this amazing uh, cast because this is my first time playing with y'all. And um, I am super thrilled and honored. And this has been an absolute blast so far. So that's what I am shouting out. Aww. Boom. All y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Marcy, shout out some plugs. Hey, um, you know, first off, thanks to everyone in chat. Uh, thanks for everyone who's tuning in to watch. Uh, Manipod Studios has a lot of great games uh, that you should either uh, think about maybe playing with us in or watching. For example, if you're not sick of myself, Zach, or Hopper, well, we're back on Sunday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern time for our Invisible Sun game, The Hole in the World. Uh, super wild, super surreal. If you like that kind of just absolutely bonkers out there fantasy, you should check us out. Uh, if you're missing episodes, why don't you check out our YouTube channel where we have all of the backlogs for not just The Hole in the World, but for Flights of Fandom and a host of other shows that we have. Um, particularly for flights of fandom schedule obviously we're doing mad max for the rest of march and then we're doing a hard left turn into bridgerton for <laughs> april if you can believe that <laughs> why are we like this <laughs> it's gonna be i, I really think that transition oh, is gonna be about as delicate and subtle as a two by four to the vase um <laughs> would would they have us any other way <laughs> no nah, not really why would you be here uh and then in may we're gonna be detouring back to our star wars flight concluding a three-part series that we've been doing with that so join us for that and then in june uh, we're doing Bioshock, and uh, I'm going to be DMing for the first time. So that'll be fun yes. for everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I'll be posting schedules, uh, our calendar schedule. Uh, join us in our Discord. And if you ever want to play in one of our Flights of Fandom games or any other game on this channel, you should hit us up. Awesome. Hopper, you're up. 
Oh shit, that's me. What's up? I'm regrettably still Hopper. Um, uh, it's Terminal, and uh, <laughs> for you, it's Terminal for for all of you. Um, and uh, I have. It has been a joy playing Daxo, this little weirdo. Um, if you, yeah, I think uh, we just covered most of my other bullshit already. But I'd like to throw a quick shout out to. Uh, uh, Party of One podcast, which is a really awesome actual play uh, run by Jeff Stormer, who is uh, who is a I would say a, a, a occasional cast member, but at this point a consistent GM on Flights of Fandom, and he is super recurring rad- guest star, recurring guest star, yeah, a, any award winning podcast host Jeff Stormer who graces us with his presence, um, and uh, you should check that out. And if you are into um, actual plays of non TTRPGs, uh, Zach, I, and Bill from Hole in the World and Ned Donovan from the amazing podcast and Counterparty are all playing through Gloomhaven um, on a completely inconsistent and chaotic schedule <laughs> over on my uh, channel, The Legend Tree. Um, and it is it is a delight. It is dumb. It is fun. Um, pop in, hang out, listen to us uh, get fucked up by the game because it's very hard. Um, but it's fun and uh, i think that's it for me and david awesome uh once again i've been david you can check out my game stuff over at dbb-8.itch.io uh, including some stuff that we've played right here on flights of fandom like uh in the dark my simplified hack of blades in the dark that's pay what you wish um up there uh, on itch so go check that out if you want more of my stuff, uh, check me out on Instagram and Twitter. I'm at Brunel Brutman. That's it for me. Awesome. And uh, everybody's uh, said everything uh, that I already wanted to plug. So uh, let me just throw it out to uh, uh, Angel Citadel, which is a friend of uh, The Hole in the World. Uh, they are awesome. They do reviews, uh, blog posts. Uh, they shoot the shit and do a TPRG, a TTRPG fireside chats as well as... Uh, uh, play random uh, PC games on uh, Fridays. Uh, they're run by uh, Josh uh, uh, Walls, and uh, you can check them out uh, pretty frequently, and uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to uh, hang out some more with them in the future. So in the meantime, guys, though, uh, look forward to next week. Uh, check out The Hole in the World. I believe our next episode is this Sunday, right, guys? Am I wrong? My crazy. Yeah. Sure is, is, DM. DM. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> I'll be I'll be calling in from uh, Colorado, so it's... anticipate garbage <laughs> potato quality video from incredible. Me. <laughs> and uh, yeah, in the meantime, guys, uh, come play with us. It's gonna be a good time. Come play with us. Come play with us, Danny. And good night, everybody. <laughs>